students today we'll be understanding the major differences between the scalar product and the vector product of two vectors you all know that whenever we take a product of two vectors either it is a scalar product or it is a vector product so on one side i'm writing scalar product and on the other side I'm writing vector product now this theta is the angle between vector A and vector B so the scalar product is given by Whereas, if I had to draw the diagram for the vector product, these two vectors will be same. Theta is the angle in the anti-clockwise direction. And I had to also plot this n cap, which is a vector perpendicular to both A and B. And the formula becomes A cross B equals mod A mod B sine theta into n cap. Well, if I come back to the scalar product, you can see that these are only the numbers mod A, magnitude of a A is a number, magnitude of a B is a number, and cos theta, the range of cos theta is minus 1 to 1. So when you multiply each and everything, it will only be the number, not the direction. So hence called scalar product. Whereas, if I come back to the vector product, and we see that mod A, mod B, sine theta, all are the numbers. But we are multiplying all these numbers, this product, with n cap. It is again converting to vector. Therefore, it is called the vector product. The second difference is that because of this dot, it has the name dot product. And because of this cross, it has the name cross product. So even if they say find the cross product, it means they are saying find the vector product. And for dot product, it is the scalar product. Well, the formula is using cos theta. So, so if we have to find cos theta, the formula becomes 8 dot b divided by mod a mod b whereas if we have to find the angle through the vector product it is the sine theta and the formula becomes mod of a cross b over mod a mod b well dot product that is the scalar product is not a binary operation Whereas the vector product, that is the cross product, is a binary operation. That is, if we take two vectors and multiply them, then the cross product obeys the closure law. Vector cross vector is again a vector. Whereas a dot b vector dot vector is not a vector therefore it is not a binary operation because it is not obeying the closure law coming on to the next dot product is commutative that is a dot b is equal to b dot a that is even if we change the direction from anti-clockwise to clockwise the answer remains the same this is because of cos minus theta cos minus theta is cos theta whereas the cross product is anti commutative that is a cross b is equal to minus b cross a you all know that sine minus theta is minus sine theta so if we change the direction from anti clockwise to clockwise 
it becomes a minus of b cross a. Well, if I write a dot b dot c, this is meaningless because after taking a dot product with two vectors, we can ordinarily multiply with third vector. Dot with third is not possible. But in case of cross product, you can do that. You can find a cross b and whatever is the result, because that will be a vector, you can multiply that with another, that is the third vector. Moving further, if A is perpendicular to B, then A dot B is zero. Whereas in case of cross product, if A is collinear with B, then A cross B is zero because the angle then between them will be either zero degree or 180 degrees. And in both the cases, sign will be zero. And when A is perpendicular to B, the angle between them is 90 degrees and cos 90 will be zero. Well, remember, I'm writing zero here, but I'm writing zero vector here. It is very important because this side is a scalar and this side is a vector. Coming on to the next. Well, if three vectors are orthogonal, that is, are mutually perpendicular, then A dot B will be zero, B dot C will be zero, and C dot A will be zero. Well, this thing will not hold true in case of cross product. So if three vectors are mutually perpendicular or orthogonal, then the cross product of two will be some constant times of three. We are lambda one, lambda two, lambda three are numbers or scalars. That is constants. Next, if I do take the absolute value of dot product, because this side, the number can be negative because cos, the range of cos theta is minus one to one. So the dot product can be negative. So if I have to take the modulus value, then A dot B whole mod will be mod A mod b and mod of cos theta whereas in case of cross product because as you all know theta belongs to close interval of 0 to pi and sine in both the quadrants is non-negative so if we need to put mod then there is no need to put absolute value on sine theta and you can leave it like this and obviously mod of n cap will be one. So the formula is mod of a cross b is mod a mod b sine theta. Coming on to the next, the geometric interpretation is of scalar product is projection projection of one vector on the other. If this is the B vector and this is A vector, then this is this distance is, say OA dash is the projection of A vector on B. Whereas the geometric interpretation of vector product is the area vector, that is the area of parallelogram. If I take A vector and B vector to be the adjacent sides, then this A cross B vector will indicate the area vector. That is, it'll, it'll indicate the entire area of parallelogram O, A, B, C. So this is the area of the parallelogram. This is very important. Well, the physical interpretation of 
scalar product is work done that is force dot displacement whereas the physical interpretation of vector product is moment of a force about a point force into the perpendicular distance so it is moment of a force about a point well these are the major differences hope that you got the idea of dot product and scalar product and it is always good to study two things which are confusing by putting them on the edge keep sharing watching and liking the videos do comment and subscribe thank you very much